parable of the sower, Jesus tells us about the sower, God sowing seed, both scripture and more broadly, all of the ways that he talks to us. And the seed lands on four kind of soil types, a hardened path, rocky ground, thorny soil, and rich soil. If you're watching this video, and thank you, and obviously you are watching it, well, you're striving to be rich soil. That being said, those other types, the path, rocky ground, the thorns, there are echoes of them still for all of us. And you might know people that are really stuck in those different areas. So we're going to look at each very briefly, exactly what are they in today's fallen world? And most importantly, what do we do about them? Welcome again. I'm Steve Smith, the founder of Interior Life. In these Go Deeper videos, we look at the spiritual realities that explain both ourselves and the fallen world and how we rise above that fallen world around us. Let's open with the sign of the cross in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, looking at the parable of the sower, as I'm recording this, if you're Catholic, that's the reading that's coming up this Sunday, the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. If you're not Catholic, it's still a great parable. It explains so much about the interior life of us and others. And again, if you are watching this, you're looking to grow in holiness and have that rich soil in your heart. It's still worth reflecting on each of these other types because we'll see we can have echoes of them still in our own heart and it may help us help others. Let's start with the first one, that hardened path. What is that? When the seed, God's word hits that, it is a hardened heart. It's impenetrable. It cannot understand what those words mean. And here's the message and it's just blah, 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 blah. Like the Charlie Brown cartoons, wah, 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 wah. Who back then at the time of the parable, Jesus was referring to the Pharisees who refused to see him as the Messiah. Who is it now? Anyone who completely shuts them off, themselves off to God. If you're rich, self-sufficient, attached to the world, it, there's no room for God in your life. That's who this is reflecting. But there are echoes in this for each of us. If, if there's something that we're just not able to accept, something we think God is asking of us that we don't think we can do or that we can't let go of, that's where we have those echoes of this in our heart. Again, we'll circle back and see what do we do about that. The second type, the rocky ground. Now, this is, remember, the first type, it was a lack of understanding. Now it's a lack of endurance. Maybe you kind of understand and there's that initial excitement, but, it, but it's superficial. It doesn't last. Lack of endurance. In the time of the gospel, Jesus was particularly referring to those that they wanted the loaves and the fishes, they wanted the miracles, but as soon as the going got tough, not so much, especially because they would face trials or persecution. What is that for us now? Well, this is when we encounter something that we think God is calling us to, and there's that initial excitement, yeah, we're going to do this. And then, uh, yeah, the second you hit that, that little bit of resistance, pff, okay, never mind. Some specific examples, it could be something as simple as, you know what, I'm going to start blessing myself in public, saying grace before a meal. And boy, that sounds great at first, but second it gets hard, forget about it. Or persecution, maybe you're in this crazy woke world, maybe where you work. Boy, if I don't hop on the pride bandwagon or whatnot, I might not get a promotion. You know, that's real persecution that's coming at us. So we can all... and face this a little bit. The world is getting much tougher in terms of those trials and persecutions. So it's not even necessarily that we're, we're superficial, but do we really have it in us to stand up to the resistance that's out there? The third, the thorns. This is the cares of the world, particularly, Jesus said, anxiety and riches, kind of those attachments. Both of these are related to what? To fear, anxiety, fear of the future, attachment, fear of how am I going to get by without this? And here, Jesus distinguishes that the rocky ground, that's kind of immediate. The second you hit that resistance, you just give up. But with the thorns, this is what just drags us down over time. The world constantly giving those temptations. The world constantly giving us messages of gloom and doom. Finally, that's, that's the rich soil. That's you. That's why you're here and you're working on this. This is the heart that both understands so that intellect and takes action and has fortitude and perseverance, the will. I'm going to see this through, and this is when we bear fruit. A hundred, sixty, thirtyfold. Here the challenge is that the enemy then just wants to minimize its losses. It wants to reduce our fruitfulness as much as it can, and we'll circle back then. Now, how do we respond in each of these cases? 
before then, as is customary these days, if this is helpful or useful to you, please do like and, and subscribe and share. Very helpful these days. Leave a comment, especially. I, what else would you like to hear? What questions or thoughts or inspiration or insights do you have on this? Okay, how do we respond or help others respond in these different scenarios? Back to the hardened path, that hardened heart. The main thing here is when we hit something that is just impassable to us is don't walk away from it. Don't walk away from Christ. Venerable Fulton Sheen tells a story where by happenstance, he had dinner with a man in France. They were strangers to each other and the man is thinking of convert, really reverting back to the Catholic Church. The issue is he's having an illicit affair, one of a string of them. And Venerable Sheen, back then Father Sheen says, yeah, you got to give that up. For that that's just too big of a sin, too much weight on you. You got to give up the affairs and that's too much for the guy. And he just says, sorry, and he walks away. And this happens again and again in scripture, the rich young man who just walks away. What about the apostles? What did they do when they were told something difficult? You have to forgive seven times 70. They just say, Lord, that's hard. Who can do this? But they don't walk away. They're just honest. That's really hard. That's what we have to do or help others do. If we're, if there's something that's just a real sticking point for us, don't walk away. Just keep going to God with this is, I don't see how I'm supposed to do this. If this is so important for me, God, help me, help me, show me how to get to the other side, how to live out your will. Don't walk away. Rocky ground is when we have, don't have that endurance and it's, it can be a little bit superficial, but for us, there's echoes of it for us in the world around us is the world is really amping up the resistance and the persecution. If we go it alone, we get picked off here. Always have someone, a partner, someone with you for that encouragement. When Christ sent out the disciples, he sent them out two by two. Why? That's how we're hooked up. We're made for community. So whatever it is, if it's that small thing, I'm just going to start blessing myself for meals. We'll see if whoever you're with is on board with that to the bigger trials in life. Have someone to share these with, have someone you know for accountability and so on. Don't go it alone. Three, the thorns. These are the thing, the cares of the world that just drag us down over time. This is kind of a big topic. We put out a series, Five Days to Spiritual Vaccination, you know, through Interior Life. You can find out more about that if you want. Go, go to the About section. Thing. But two simple things, though. Always staying in the present moment. The second we feel ourselves being drawn into the future and the, that worry and the anxiety, coming back to the moment, just, Jesus, I trust in you taking a pause, not letting our imagination run away wild with us. And then dealing with fear and detachments. This is where recreation, we recreate, we recreate, reclaiming Sunday. Take Sunday off, take meaningful vacations, and especially ideally once a year, take a retreat. When we connect with God and the things of God like that, suddenly the worldly stuff that wants to get those thorns in us starts losing that purchase on us, especially getting rid of all the anti-social media and, and all that other garbage that just is, is just a sewer these days. But meaningful recreation goes so far to distancing ourselves from those thorns that want to grab into us. Finally, the rich soil. Remember here, we want to be, you know, it's 30, 60 or hundredfold. Well, we want to be a hundredfold. <laughs> the enemy wants us to be 30 or 15 or 10 or five. One of the best ways be generous. Help someone else. Help someone else in these other areas. Again, if you're watching this, th these things aren't that much of a challenge for you. you know, they're, they're, it's just echoes of them. If you see someone really struggling, you know, go be that partner for somebody else who's really having a hard time standing up to the trials and the persecution of the world. Help lift someone else out of those thorns. Help someone else change the soil of their heart. And that brings us, okay, here's a little bonus round then. Some of the interesting things about the interior life that are brought out through this parable. And this is where spiritual traditions matter because lots of great saints and, and spiritual masters have thought through this. First, can we change the soil of our heart? Or is it just locked in like that unfortunate fellow who walked away from Fulton Sheen? Well, St. John Chrysostom says this, with the human soul, there is such a thing as the rock changing and becoming rich land. With human soul, it's possible that the pathway might no longer be trampled upon or lie open to all who pass by, but that it may become a fertile field. For had it been impossible, this sower would not have sown. Here's bonus number two. We always talk about the three enemies, Satan and his minions, 
the fallen world and our fallen nature. And we see them right here in this parable in verse 19, chapter 13, verse 19. Jesus says, the enemy snatches away the seed. And the enemy, here we see Satan reflected. In verse 21, talking about the rocky ground, it's saying because the person has no root in himself, our fallen nature, you know, we don't have deep roots. And in verse 22, Jesus references the cares of the world, the fallen world. They're the three enemies for you. Satan, our fallen nature, fallen world. A couple of bonuses there. Finally, if you want to learn more about your human nature, what it means to be human, the difference between our physical brain, our spiritual soul, our spiritual mind, the link below in cheerlife.faith backslash owner's manual. We have to understand that about ourselves and share that with everyone else to really understand what's going on in the fallen world around us. Until next time, blessings to you on your journey with Christ.